Hey guys, it's General Heat here. How's everyone doing today? So, as you know by now, Halo MCC recently got a huge update, and with that update, a lot of new skulls were added to Halo 3 and ODST. Now, most of these skulls were from Halo 2 Anniversary. Uh, basically, all the Halo 2 Anniversary skulls have now been ported over to both Halo 3 and ODST. So, for this video, we'll be going through all the new official skulls that have been added and what they do. Now all these skulls, almost all of them, are for both Halo 3 and ODST, but there are a couple that are only for Halo 3 or only for ODST. So let's start with the Anger Skull. The Anger Skull makes it so that enemies shoot you a lot faster, as in if, they, uh, if the weapons are fired in bursts, they'll fire in faster bursts. As you can see here, the grunts are pretty much spamming uh, the needlers and plasma pistol bolts at me really quickly. Now we're on easy difficulty, so it won't make too much of a difference, but on legendary difficulty, that will uh, deplete your shields like very rapidly. Next up we have the Bandana Skull. This one's pretty self-explanatory. It's been included on Halo 1 Anniversary and Halo 2 Anniversary, and now it is finally on Halo 3 Anniversary. <laughs> Not Anniversary, just Halo 3. Uh, but basically it just gives you infinite ammo and infinite grenades, and I've, been, I've wanted the skull for a long time, and it's really awesome that's finally here. Uh, next up we have the Boom Skull. This skull increases the blast radius of explosions. Uh, this one's actually kind of hard to like show in game. I, I guess because like the blast radius of like Halo 3 grenades and stuff weren't wasn't really that high to begin with. But it should uh, increase the blast radius and combined with like the, the Cowbell Skull it should make uh, interesting like launching tricks possibly. Next up we have the Eye Patch Skull. This skull is a uh, well, this one makes it so that you don't have auto-aim anymore, which has its ups and downs actually, depending on what you're doing. Uh, makes it harder to aim sometimes with weapons, but when you're driving vehicles, have you ever noticed that sometimes the auto-aim kicks in and like pulls your vehicle to like a certain direction and it makes you like crash or fall off a cliff? That'll prevent it. Uh, but next up we have the Foreign Skull. This makes it so that you can't pick up Covenant weapons, or really any non-human weapons. So. No uh, plasma weapons, no brute weapons, none of that. Next up, we have the Ghost Skull. So, this skull is, um, it makes it so that when enemies get hit, they don't flinch. And you can see that when I'm punching the brute here, the brute just doesn't flinch at all. It doesn't, it doesn't get stunned or knocked back by my punching. I'm actually surprised it's a non-scoring skull. This one... I, don't know, I feel like it could have been like a scoring skull, like a 1.1x skull maybe, but it's a non-scoring skull. Uh, next up we have the jacked skull. This one is, uh, well, it's interesting in Halo 3 actually, because this skull makes it so that you can only enter vehicles by hijacking them or by boarding them, which means you can't ask marines to give you vehicles or anything like that you won't be able to get in at all. You can't even get marines out of vehicles. You have to let an enemy vehicle get by you and hijack it in order to drive it. Which, you know, it sounds like it's a good challenge and stuff like that. But the problem is, some missions in Halo 3 require <laughs> vehicles, like the Hornet section of the Covenant, you have to fly to the tower. You can't do that on foot. Or the Warthog run. I mean, I guess you technically, it's very difficult to do it on foot and you need like a lot of people and it's a really difficult trick to do. But it's for, for, for all practical purposes, you, you need a vehicle to do the Warthog run, unless you use the Acrophobia Skull. Anyways, right now we're on the Pinata Skull, very self-explanatory, just like all the other games. Punching enemies makes them drop grenades. Uh, next up we have the So Angry Skull. This skull makes it so that when brutes uh, get enraged, they explode. Now in Halo 3 and ODSD, brutes actually don't get enraged that often they don't like, they don't go berserk like they do in Halo 2 so it actually took me quite a few tries before I could finally get a brute to go berserk and then explode it might happen more on higher difficulties but on easy the brutes they don't seem to berserk that much for me next up we have the swarm skull this one makes the hunters are more dangerous and uh, they I, I believe it increases the scoring value if you have campaign scoring turned on so this one is hard to it's hard to tell, actually. It's hard to gauge properly. I mean, I, I guess I could say, like, the Hunters... I, I'm on easy difficulty, but I guess I could say the Hunters feel like they're tougher. 
it, it, it definitely seems like they're more aggressive, like they're shooting me more and attacking me more. But again, that's really hard to gauge. Uh, but that's what the skull is supposed to do. Next up, we have the That's Just Wrong skull. This skull increases enemy awareness of you. So if you're trying to like sneak up on an enemy, even though you're not in their line of sight, they might see you anyways. Like, almost like they have like a like a sixth sense or something like that for you. Uh, but again, this is another skull that's really hard to gauge. Because like, I'm not actually sure if you know, they would have seen me anyways from me like walking like that. Or if they were just, you know, alerted because of the skull. But that's, again, that's what it's supposed to do. This next skull is the They Come Back skull. And this one's only for Halo 3, not ODST. And it has to do with the Flood. Now, I know ODST has Flood Firefight now. But unfortunately, the skull is only available for Halo 3 still. Probably because it's like it's only for campaign and there's no Flood in the ODST campaign. But it, the skull makes it so that uh, Flood combat forms that are spawned from dead bodies getting revived, they're supposed to be a lot more dangerous. But like that hunter skull, I again can't really tell like if they're actually more dangerous. That I mean it seems like they're attacking me more aggressively, but again I can't really tell. Next up is the Acrophobia skull. Now as far as this update is concerned, the skull is just for ODST because it's already existed on Halo 3 for a very long time. So it is new to ODST only, and it does the same thing. It lets you fly around and explore the map, and it's a really fun and great skull. You just gotta be careful not to like fly too fast and hit something while flying, because you'll die instantly. Now, unfortunately, the skull isn't as fun in ODST, because Bungie added a lot more barriers to ODST. Like, you can see I'm barely flying that high up, and I'm already hitting the sky barrier. And when I fly out, I hit the outer barriers pretty easily, too. So. It it's not as wide open of areas to explore, unfortunately. Next up, we have a co-op skull called Bonded Pair, and this is back to both games. Uh, Bonded Pair makes it so that when one person dies, the other player gets a damage boost. Now, I don't, I'm not sure if I did it correctly, actually, because I betrayed my ally, and I'm shooting Marines after that, and I don't think it's actually working. It might be the other players to die by enemies, and then you get a damage boost on enemies, but wasn't quite sure. Uh, next up we have the Malfunction Skull. This one's technically not a um, co-op skull, like it doesn't, it's not listed as one, but it was easier to test in co-op anyways. But basically, um, each time you respawn, a random element of your HUD is disabled. So, you can see the on the bottom screen, the reticle is uh, gone. And now on the top screen, when I respawn, my radar is gone, and it'll keep disabling like a random part of the HUD each time you respawn. For the last skull that we'll be taking a look at is the Master Blaster Skull. This is another co-op skull, and it's a scoring one this time. And it's actually kind of a fun, interesting one too. Maybe not at higher difficulties, but uh, it's still fun nonetheless. So it makes it so that one player has um, overshields, but cannot shoot. They can only melee. While the other player can shoot, and I believe they do extra damage, but they have no shields. So it's kind of like a balanced trade-off, if you will. And it's uh, if either player dies, then the, uh, the whatever bonus you have switches to the other player. So if um, the player on the bottom of the screen were to die, then the player at the top screen will have no shields. Uh, but they'll be able to shoot and do more damage. So it's a, it's an interesting skull, and that is available for both Halo 3 and ODST as well. Like I said, only a couple skulls were exclusive to either game. So there you guys have it. Those are all the new skulls that have been added to Halo 3 and ODST, and as well as what each skull does. So hopefully you found this video to be informative and interesting, and if you did enjoy it, as always, make sure to leave a like. Uh, leave a thoughts in the comments, anything else me to check out or look into, any questions you have, or anything you want me to experiment with, or uh, just, you know, just figure out or stuff like that, just let me know down below. And aside from that, make sure to subscribe, and I'll see you all next time. Bye, guys.